What is going on, Stallions and Stallionettes? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Actually, the Gamer Heaven is over there in that room. This is my living room. First of all, you're going to have to take me at my word that I don't just generally sit around here with myself playing on the television. That is a handsome man, though. The audio quality in this video is not going to be great. Generally, I either sound like this. If you caught my video two days ago, I talked about a bundle with over $6,500 worth of goodies. That's 500 PC indie games, as well as gaming soundtracks. Or I sound like this. Escape from Tarkov or something where I'm listening for footsteps. However, I have my microphone set up, but I'm pretty far away from it, walking around so I can do a comprehensive buyer's guide when you are looking at buying a gaming chair or office chair. A gaming chair is a category or a type of office chair, such as an executive chair. But generally, gaming chairs have aggressive bolstering, and because of that design, that they have a metal or steel tubular design covered with minimal padding to look sexy on camera because you're a streamer or YouTuber, there is a minority that are actually comfortable, and the majority are relatively uncomfortable. But there's more to it than just that. How are we going to delineate or separate the shitters and quitters from the rippers and dippers? Should have been a rapper, but I prefer YouTube. First of all, do you need a gaming gaming chair. No, you probably are going to need some kind of an office chair if you're going to be sitting at a desk doing video editing, productivity, gaming, streaming, whatever it is you might be doing. I don't know. I'm real loose in the hips right now. You can tell by the fact I'm swaying back and forth. You're going to need some kind of an office chair. Does it have to be a gaming chair? Absolutely not. But the fact you clicked on this video after reading the title and looking at the thumbnail means that you're interested in getting a gaming chair. Good on you. I have a couple here. Hit you with the wide angle and the wide hips. Shakira, they don't lie. And neither do I in this video. I'm going to break down the fact that you really don't need a gaming chair. You really don't don't need a high-end or flagship gaming chair. They do offer some nice features. However, a lot of times you are paying for the branding. So we have covered that you need an office chair to park your back and crack in, but it doesn't have to be a gaming chair. So it can be an executive chair, which are generally very padded, but they're also very expensive as well. And you can get a solid back chair like these here, or you can get a mesh back chair, which is basically like a net. This one is partially mesh, but as you can see, it still has a cloth or solid bottom. And this one is a fully mesh or net chair, as it is aptly named the air, because when you pass gas, that air is just blasting right through. And we're gonna cover the difference between those two types of chairs, but the very first thing you should do when picking out a gaming chair is to figure out your price point. First of all, you need to look at your budget and hey, what can I afford? Now, this is something that I have preached for the longest time. The sweet spot for purchasing a gaming chair is between $160 and $300. There are chairs that you can get for $80 on Amazon. I started with one. I think it was 88 bucks out the door delivered to my porch. And I used that for two years. I did not realize what an uncomfortable sack of crap I was sitting on until I upgraded down the road. Now, generally between 160 and $300, you are getting the same premium materials and build quality as some of the high-end flagships, but you are not paying for the branding, the name brand, that logo emblazoned on the headrest. In my experience, having tested, reviewed, and owned several gaming chairs, keep in mind the ones behind me are not all we've had on the channel. I've also reviewed a respawn 110, a Blitzwolf RGB chair, and a couple of other ones that I can't think of. And this is what I have currently in my house. You don't really need an expensive chair, even if you can afford it, because you can pass on those savings and spend your money better elsewhere such as games and hookers and blow or whatever it is that you're into. I would steer clear of anything under $160 because generally they're gonna be cheap generic crap that'll either be savagely uncomfortable, not have the feature sets and adjustment that you need to get your ergonomics right for your back and your arms, or they're just gonna fall apart and you need to get a more expensive chair anyway. And I'm not gonna tell you not to get an expensive chair. For example, the Air over here is a $500 chair and it is my daily driver. It is a great chair. This bad boy over here is a $300 chair. This is a $300 chair. This is under $200. This is around $160. This is around $160. This one's around $200. So you don't need to go above $300 because generally when you get to that price point, you are paying for the name or branding, but that is not always the case. Sometimes you are getting a chair that has either more adjustment, better build quality, a better warranty and reliable customer service. Enough filler, enough fluff. Let's get right down to the bluff or bottom line up front. What do you need in a gaming chair? If you are somebody that sweats a lot, generally your back and crack get very sweaty, or you're somebody that's very gassy and farts a lot, you should definitely look into an open air chair, something like a mesh net like these over here. Either partially just the back or bottom or a fully mesh design like that. They are very comfortable. That was something I was worried about. They weren't gonna be as comfortable as a traditional chair with padding and then a leather or leatherette material over it. Not the case. This is actually more comfortable than any of these chairs here. This 
this being a very close second over here. So some features that your chair should have as they are industry standards and virtually all gaming chairs come with them. First of all, they should be able to recline to at least, is that, is that a 90, 45? No, the 90 is like that, 45. It should be able to lean back to at least a 45. A lot of these, the majority of them can actually lay back completely flat. I don't hardly ever use that feature. I might recline a little bit, but I never lay all the way back. It is a standard feature that should come with any gaming chair. Two, lumbar support. Generally, how these chairs are gonna go about getting lumbar support is with a little lower back pillow that raises up and down with these Velcro straps and you are also going to have yourself a neck rest pillow as well. And this is to go into the small of your neck or you can hike it up a little bit higher to the crown of your skull back here. Dealer's choice, whatever is comfortable for you. But almost all gaming chairs are gonna come with two pillows, a lower back lumbar pillow and then a neck pillow or headrest. And you might be thinking to yourself, this one doesn't have lower back lumbar. It does actually, it's in the back here you have a little support beam or bar that you're able to raise up and down. And then you do have the neck pillow, which is actually full size, so it covers your head and your neck and pops off like that. Some gaming chairs have very shitty quality stock factory OEM pillows. However, that's not a big deal because you can pop an extra 20, 30 bucks on Amazon and get a nice memory foam upgrade or aftermarket pillow, which I prefer those because a lot of times they don't have a logo or branding on them. They're just all one solid color, which I think looks really slick. I will have a couple of those linked in the description below. I mean, if you've seen the reviews of all these chairs on my channel, none of them are bad chairs, but I do point out the cons of them in those reviews. There will be comprehensive reviews for all of these chairs linked in the description below. And I also have a playlist on the channel titled Gaming and Office Chairs, where I do the reviews of all these and tutorials on how to clean a gaming chair. This buyer's guide will go into that playlist as well. So it should recline to at least a 45 degree angle. You should have a lower back lumbar and neck rest pillow. The armrest should adjust at least up and down, but most of these have two, three, or even four way. They call it like 3D or 4D, a little marketing gimmick there. But basically it's like four way adjustment. Then you have to look at the armrest material. Sometimes they're just a hard rubber, uh, this is a soft rubber here. That one's kind of a hard rubber. Or sometimes they're padded like these here. And with this design, when you recline them back, what happens is the armrests actually swivel. They're on a hinge mechanism. So when you recline back, these move. However, they generally move back too far and you can't slide them forward. And I'm not a huge fan of these. I would prefer something like these. These ones are always just rubber or hard plastic. There's a chair company out there watching. Corner the market here, please. Get the best of both worlds where you have this 4D or four-way adjustment, but the same padding as these ones here without this design where you swivel back. I have yet to find a chair that does both of those. You have to pick and choose. And I prefer these kind of armrests versus these two kind of armrests over here. Next up, some of these chairs do have leg rests that extend out. This is actually the cheapest chair here and she does it. And this allows you, well, sure enough, you don't have to be Leonardo da Vinci and crack the da Vinci code to figure out what these do. It allows you to have your feet propped up. I never, ever, ever use this feature. So to me, it is useless. However, if you are somebody that lays back in your gaming chair a lot, fully laying out, this might be a big deal to you. This one is kind of nice though, cause it's like a plush or velour material, kind of like Alcantara or micro suede. Then you're gonna find chairs that have some very unique or gimmicky features. For example, the RGB chair I tested. It's cool, but it adds to the price and it's not doing anything for the comfort or reliability. This one over here, the Vaughn Racer, has a massaging back pillow. I never use that because it's not wireless. It needs to be plugged up and then I'm ripping it out of the wall when I slide around. Not to mention, you can hear the vibration through my microphone, even with my noise gate. And it, it's just nothing that I ever use. Use. So to me, that is a gimmick feature. And of course you wanna have a chair that will fit your body size. So if you are incredibly tall or you are a bigger guy or gal, a heavier gamer, you're gonna to wanna to look at a big and tall chair. Most of these companies do have a big and tall model on their website. That's obviously what you wanna look at. Generally, they're a little bit more expensive because they take more materials to build. And also they feel like you need a big chair so they can charge you for it. As for materials, lower end and even some of the mid range chairs have pleather or leatherette material. It's imitation leather, it's not real. However, some of the flagship or high end chairs have a thin leather. Some of the expensive ones have even Napa and vegan leather uh, and micro suede and velour materials such as Alcantara. You don't really need that unless you're sitting in your chair shirtless or completely naked and you're feeling that sweet suede on your spine. It's not going to matter. You have a t-shirt on anyway. I would stick between $160 and $300. Make sure that your chair has certain features such as reclining to at least a 45 degree angle. The more adjustment in the armrest, the better. And if you do want to go past the $300 price point, past that price ceiling into the flagship 
or high-end chairs. I haven't tested Razer or Alienware. I have sat in quite a few Corsair and Secret Labs chairs, and in my opinion, I do not think they warranted the high price point, and I felt like people were paying for the branding, for the name. Now, a high-end premium flagship chair that you're not really paying for the name, you're paying for additional features and build quality, would be the Air over here by DX Racer. DX Racer isn't a very prestigious brand or anything, but when you look at all the reviews and you look at the actual quality of their product or park your crack in one, it is very, very comfortable. Like that is a $500 chair, which is freakishly expensive. However, if you take care of your chair and you maintain it much like a house or a car, it's gonna last you for years. It's kind of an investment, much like a bed, which you spend maybe a third of your life in if you sleep eight hours a day, which I can't even remember the last time I got eight hours of sleep, but it's something that you're gonna be sitting in for a long time. And your back and basically your body's health is very important. If you are on an extreme budget, don't feel bad about getting a cheap chair, but if you can afford it, again, 160 to 300, sweet spot. And if you can go above that, but not pay for gamer clout by having a Secret Labs badge behind your skull, something like DX Racer over here is a good option if you have a good chunk of change in your pocket and you want to invest in yourself. By the way, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies or anything. I do have affiliate links for some of these chairs. I'm about to fly away or something. Meaning if you use those links, you don't pay an extra dime, but I get a small commission from the sale for referring you, which greatly supports me in the channel. And I do really appreciate that. But I am completely un bias with all these chairs. I think all of them have pros. They all have like one thing or a couple things that I just wish were slightly improved. For example, the armrests over here, if they were to just put like a better material up here, I think that'd be great. For a $500 chair, you would expect it to have like some memory foam in there and maybe some suede or something, but doesn't have that. For this video not being scripted, I don't think I've really rambled too much or anything. And I think I've got my key points out. We know the price point. We know what features we need. We know which gimmicky features and names to stay away from. I think I can safely wrap this video up. I think I've done my good deed for the day. I think I might've saved your guys back crack and a couple shekels in the coin purse. That's all I really wanted to do with this video was save you some money and have you not be all broken down and brittle by the time you're 32. I'm AK40 Kevin. This is Gamer Heaven. These are gaming chairs. Now you know how to buy one. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps to get seen by more gamers this information will reach in a system as well which in turn helps me grow this little channel which i do greatly appreciate subscribe for more content like this i cover news in the gaming community and industry tutorials helping you get set up streaming and youtubing as well as honest gaming product reviews keyboards mice headsets controllers mics chairs etc there are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at gamer heaven check out into the am for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my gaming giblets if you don't want to be scorched your corneas with harmful blue light check out gamer advantage the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work if you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back aim definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to xbox playstation and switch controllers nope they don't do switch but they do do gaming mice i said doo doo. i have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below if you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline check my short form videos out at tiktok follow me at facebook gaming where i am a partner and upload a ton of exclusive gameplay content to get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace